Hello, my name is Nidge, and tonight on Imagine This, we've got our eyes on the skies. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. We have been wondering what they are. We've had a lot of questions about stars. Hi, my name's Neva, and I'm five years old, and I want to know how the star is made. Hello, my name is Eddie. I'm five years old, and I would like to know what a star is made of. Hi, I'm Junse, and I'm six years old. I want to know what stardust is made of. My name is Lorenzo, and I'm seven years old. I want to know what happens when a star dies. I know what they are made of. A rock. I think they're made out of glitter and gold. They cut out a star shape and then they make it light up. I know who can help us with all these star questions, and she's a bit of a star herself. Dr Kirsten Banks is an astrophysicist. Astrophysicist? Astrophysicists learn all about the stars, things in space and the mysteries of our universe. I reckon I know where to find her, but we should probably bring a torch. Hey, Dr. Banks. Hi, Nidge. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Kirsten. Kirsten. Hello. Hello. Hi, Dr. Banks. I knew we'd find you out here. Ah, uh, you got me. Under the night sky with a telescope. Kirsten, we've got lots of questions about space. Do you think you could help us out? Of course. How are stars made? What stardust? And how do stars die? That is a whole constellation of questions. And the answers lie right up there. I recognise that constellation. I can see Orion's belt. It's a saucepan. What's a saucepan? You know, to cook with. It's a pot. Oh, yeah, like a frying pan? <laughs> that cluster of stars has lots of names. To my Wiradjuri mob, it's Bayami, our creator spirit. I can also see his knee and his shield. Do you want to take a closer look? How? Our imagination. Yeah. Step into my spaceship. Initiating final checks. Main engines firing. Check. Check. Rocket boosters. Check. Space suits. Check. How about snaps? Check, check. Everyone done away? Yep. All systems are go. Skies are clear to take off. Roger. Begin countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast Whoa, we're in space! Shh, they're sleeping. Who's sleeping? What's sleeping? The baby stars. The Orion Nebula is our closest star nursery. Oh, that sounds pretty cute. They're not really sleeping. <laughs> no, but it is pretty dreamy up here. Yeah, it's like a glowing, colourful, swirly cloud. Yes. A nebula is a cloud of gas and dust in space, and it's where stars are born. How? All the dust joins together and makes a star. Kind of, yeah. There's an important gas swirling around in here. It's the food for a baby star. It's called hydrogen. Hydrogen? That doesn't sound very yummy. <laughs> no, it doesn't. As the gas moves, it picks up bits of dust that are floating in space. There's dust in space? In a nebula? Didn't bring a broom. Uh, I Bless you. Stardust, it made me see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, space allergies. <laughs> it's not like the dust we get in our homes. These are very special specks, and they're much, much smaller than a grain of sand. As they swell together in this nebula, a baby star starts to form. What's making it all move? There's no wind in space, is there? No way. Of course there is. It's called stellar wind. Energy from nearby older stars and even the burps and sneezes from other baby stars can push these gassy dust clouds and make them spin. Baby stars burp? 
a giant doing a pop off. Excuse you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> As they're feeding on all this cosmic material, the hydrogen gas and grains of dust, everything starts clumping together. As more bits stick together, the baby star gets bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier. Hey, are we moving? The bigger and heavier it gets, the more gravity it has. The gravity uh, pulls you down when you go up. And if there's no gravity, you, can, you just float. Yeah. Gravity is the force that pulls objects towards each other. Heavier things have a stronger pull. That's why we stay on the ground, because the Earth is a big planet. So its gravity is pulling us little humans towards it. But in space, even bigger things have way stronger pulls, like stars. Yes, gravity is what keeps the Earth and all the other planets orbiting around the sun. Uh, this nebula is getting pretty big. It's a hungry baby. The more gravity it has, the more gas and dust and other objects it starts to pull in. We're starting to spin. We're being pulled in by the baby star's gravity. It doesn't look like a star yet. Yep. As it spins, the cloud flattens out into a disc. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Come on, let's head to the core. Whoa, thank goodness. The spinning has stopped. Where are we? The core of a young star. It takes about one million years, but eventually that hungry baby star will pull in so much gas and dust that it grows and grows and all that spinning slows right down. How big does it get? At least 80 times the size of Jupiter. Oh, that's a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in this young, massive star is getting squished together under the immense pressure of its own gravity. It's getting hot. What What's was that? that? Everything is being crushed together so tightly that the atoms of hydrogen are fusing together. This is the moment a star is born. Oh, there's no space for the atoms to move, so they're joining together. That makes the hydrogen, which is the food for the hungry baby star, turn into helium. Helium? Like the stuff in balloons that makes them float? The very same. Every bit of helium in a floating balloon was made by two hydrogen atoms smashing together just like this. Inside a star? Yep. Turning hydrogen into helium is called fusion. It creates a lot of energy. It's bright and hot, and it's almost as if the whole star is trying to explode outwards. Why doesn't it just blow up? Gravity. The gravity is pushing it down, maybe? Yes. Gravity is pushing down on the star from all sides. It's this balance of gravity pushing in and energy pushing out that keeps the star in shape and stable. Like invisible hands pushing things back in. Is that why it's shaped like a ball? Yep. Once a star is feeding on hydrogen and turning it into helium, it's all grown up. We call a star's adult life its main sequence. How long does the main sequence last? Smaller stars can stay in their main sequence of fusion for billions of years. Once they gobble up all the hydrogen, they start munching on the helium as energy, but they eventually run out of that too. And then the lights go off? Kind of, yeah. Smaller stars will cool down and fizzle out, but this is no small star. Let's jump ahead a few million years and see what happens. What's that sound? Our baby star has grown up into a red supergiant. A red giant? What? 
It's the name of really big stars. Gigantic star. Yep. A supergiant can be over 1,000 times the size of our own sun. And they only go out one way. Uh Uh-oh. I think I know what's coming next. Engage the shields. We're about to go supernova. Ah, Buckle up, everyone. Massive stars tend to have much shorter lives than smaller, stable stars. They burn hot and fast. Didn't you say it took a few million years? It's the blink of an eye in star time. Why do they blow up instead of cooling down like smaller stars? They're so big and so powerful that they keep that fusion going long after the hydrogen and the helium gases run out. They start using other elements for fuel and things start to get dicey. Eventually, that balance of energy pushing out and gravity pushing in gets unbalanced. Which side wins? Gravity. Is it going to explode? It's more like it implodes. The core stops making enough energy to push outwards and the star collapses in on itself. The collapse happens so fast and the weight of the star is so massive that it sends a huge shockwave of energy and light and matter out into the universe. Quick, put your studies on, seatbelts, everyone! (laughs) (sighs) That was hectic. Hey, are we? Back in the nebula? What are those sparkly things? I think it releases another nebula, which starts another star. When a star dies, a new one comes to life. Yep, it's the great cosmic cycle. A dying star sends everything it's made over millions of years back out into the universe. That space dust isn't just a bit of rock. It's also carbon, gold, iron, oxygen, all the things you need to make life. Whoa! Wait, is that how we get gold? Is that true? Yep. Wow. So, stars are born from gas and dust, sticking together to make a big ball of energy. And they burn so hot and bright that they start to make elements in their core. And after a supernova, those elements get released back into the universe to make more stars and planets, and you, and me. What? Almost everything on Earth has its beginnings in the core of a star. We're all made of stardust. We're made of stars? Wow. Come on, let's head back to solid ground. Looks like it's almost sunrise. Oh no, I can see the stars now. But look, here comes our star. If our star exploded, there would be no more life because our sun helps us to be alive. Our sun is a smaller, stable star. They burn bright for billions of years longer than a supergiant star. And they never go supernova? No. I promise, Earth is totally safe. Kirsten, thank you so much for teaching us about the life and death of a star. You really are a star. Anytime. It's a big universe out there. Who knows what we'll discover next? Aliens? (laughs) (laughs) So, Junsei, Neva, Lorenzo and Maisie, stars are born in huge clouds of gas and dust. In a nebula. Where the tiny specks swirl around and stick together until they get bigger and bigger and bigger They get massive. Gravity squeezes the star so tightly that the atoms in its core join together. Hydrogen turns to helium. This is called fusion. It's the food that powers the star. It makes it so hot and so bright. When a small star runs out of food, it cools down and slowly releases its energy back out into space. It fizzles out. When a massive star runs out of food, it collapses in on itself. Supernova! It explodes 
and sends its stardust out in all directions across the cosmos. Carbon, gold, oxygen, iron. These elements go on to create new stars and planets and you and me. We're made of stardust. This cycle of stars forming and dying has been going on for billions of years. Since the beginning of the universe. And it's how life on Earth is even possible. Not just to make you and me, but all life on land and in the sea and everything in between. <laughs>